Hello, my name is Sarah B, and today I'll be explaining the character sheets found in the Junior's D&D Starter Kit. Now, these character sheets are different from the official 5e character sheets. That's because my team worked hard to find a dyslexic-friendly alternative to make this game as inclusive as possible. Thank you, writers, and not share rules, and Alexa 123 for designing these sheets. Before the game can start, the players will need to select their class, and they'll have four choices. First off, we have the Fighter. They're the simplest class, as they're just strong warriors. They're my personal favorite as they're the easiest class to play. Some famous pop culture fighters include Captain America, Black Panther, and Wonder Woman. Next up we have the Rogues. They are sneaky but likable types. As the most specialized class, they have many unique abilities, from a high charisma to a sneak attack. Some famous pop culture Rogues include Jack Sparrow, Catwoman, and Han Solo. Now the class everyone's been looking forward to, Wizards. Wizards can use magic to solve a wide variety of problems, but they also can't wear armor. Wizards can be a blast, though they are the hardest class to play. Some famous pop culture wizards include Gandalf, Scarlet Witch, and Harry Potter. Last but not least, we have the Cleric. Clerics are the hardiest members of the party, and they also have powerful magic, which is meant to empower and heal their allies. Some famous pop culture clerics include Steven Universe, Moana, and Mercy from Overwatch. After everyone has received their character sheet, they can start to customize it. While these character sheets are pre-filled out, there's still plenty of room for a player's creativity. We'll start here on race. Race refers to your character's species. In D&D, the five main races are inspired by Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. You have humans, elves, dwarves, orcs, and hobbits, which are called halflings due to copyright reasons. However, this doesn't have to be a restriction. A player can choose to be anything they want. Just remember, your species doesn't actually affect your character's abilities. Here we have background and alignment. Your background is a little bit of information that's important to your character's past. Alignment is your character's sense of morality. You've probably seen D&D alignment charts made for various things, and it can be very important in some campaigns. But for this one, just give your characters the alignment of good. Next up, we have player name and other. Player name is a place for the player to sign their character sheets and others for any additional information that the player feels is important. It could be if they have a pet, a favorite book, anything really. Over here we have the name. That's where you can put your character's name. If you're having trouble coming up with one, you can ask a friend for help. This area here is the stat block. That covers your character's general abilities. Strength is how strong the character is, how much can they lift, how hard can they hit, etc. Dexterity is how swiftly they can move and how graceful they are doing it. Constitution is how hardy they are. Are they healthy and tough, or are they easily prone to sickness? Intelligence is how quickly they can learn things and solve puzzles. Wisdom is how much they know in general. It ranges from knowledge about obscure cultures to understanding basic common sense. Charisma is how good they are at charming or talking to NPCs. That stands for non-player characters. Up here we have inspiration. A DM can reward players who are doing a great job at role-playing by giving them inspiration. They can then use this inspiration to re-roll a check. Now I can see this mechanic causing tension among a younger party, so I'd recommend ignoring it. Underneath it we have proficiency bonus. Proficiency bonus are points that you can add when you're doing a skill roll that you're proficient in. Proficiency is signified by the little black dot. Speaking of skills, they are an extension of the stats, such as you need to have good strength to be good at athletics. Above the skills, we have saving throws. Saving throws are a special role the player can do when something disastrous is going to happen. Now, there shouldn't be any major disasters in Ogre and His Cake, so you won't need this mechanic. We'll go over all of this in more detail in the How to Roll video. These sections over here apply to combat. Armor class is the quality of armor the character wears. If they have better armor, then they're less likely to take damage. Initiative is how quickly they react to combat. If they have a higher initiative, then they're more likely to get the first turn. Speed is how quickly they can move across the map during combat, but there isn't really any maps in the junior kit, so you won't need to use this mechanic. This section below is meant to keep track of the character's health. Maximum HP shows the max amount of health the character could have. Temporary HP is for recording when magic alters the max health. Current HP is for keeping track of any damage the character may have received. Hit dice are for recovering health. And lastly, we have death saving throws. Death saving throws are a special role you can do to prevent your character from dying. But there shouldn't be any deaths in this campaign, so you can ignore this mechanic. Weapons covers which weapons the character has and how to use them. And below that, special attacks goes over any special attacks the character receives due to their class. We'll go over all of this in more detail in the combat video. 
Down here we have proficiencies and languages. Proficiencies note special advantages the character has in some areas. And languages know which languages they can speak and read. The party may run to a foreign language where only one member of the party can serve as a translator. Equipment is where the player can write down any items they find. They just might need them later. These small boxes are for currency. It has copper pieces to platinum pieces. Features and traits goes over any advantages their class gives them. The next page of the character sheet is entirely for fun. It's just a place where they can write their backstory, draw a picture of their character. They can do as much or as little with it as they like. You may have noticed that the cleric and wizard have a third character sheet. That's their magic sheet, which covers the spells they can cast. This will be explained more in the How to Cast Magic video. Remember, there are no hard rules in D&D. The most important part of a character is that they're fun to play and they get along well with their party. Thank you for watching this. I would recommend that you guys watch the How to Roll video next which will go into more details about stats, skills, as well as explain the dice.